we're looking to answer the question how much should one how many questions should one attempt in each section to get say 95th percentile or 99th percentile right? straight away i'm going to give all the caveats up front there is absolutely no right answer for this fine so the section difficulty could vary from from session to session from exam to exam from year to year all kinds of stuff fine so uh, i'm going to broadly give an outline for this so that you have some idea of what to go after where, where does the, where does this stack up what should i be thinking about uh, obviously based on what you see in the first 10 minutes in each section you should change your targets accordingly right? couple of assumptions we have made here in, in outlining this is uh, this year cat 2016 the DALR section is going to be simpler than last year, slightly simpler, ever so slightly simpler. At the same time, the verbal section is going to become slightly tougher. There is no particular reason for this except uh, an argument for kind of reversion to the mean. Every time the, the guys who are conducting the exam have, have find, found that the difficulty has gone too high or too low in one year, they try to bring it back to normal next year. I'm going to work under the assumption that the guys setting the paper want to have all three sections at more or less equal levels of difficulty. And so it is flipped out in one year, they'll make an adjustment the next year. It may happen, it may not happen. Fine. So don't, don't, don't be anchored to it, but that's the assumption we're working under. Fine. So what, is it, what does it take to get, say, 80th percentile in, in verbal? Should you get about 13, 14 questions, right? A maximum of 5, 6 round. Fine. If it goes to 90th percentile, then you're looking to get 18 questions, right? Maximum of 4, 5 round. 95th percentile, you should get 21, 22 questions, right? 99th percentile, you're looking to get 26 questions or thereabout, right? 25, 26, thereabout, right? Remember, your error rate as you go to the higher percentile requirement, the error rate should come down. I'm saying for 99th percentile, you should get 26 correct, you should get 26 correct, and maximum 3 down. And the, the error rate is not this merry metric that is correlated to the number of attempts. That is not how we should think about it. You cannot say, the more I attempt, the higher my error rate will be. That is not how CAT preparation works. You should always aim for an error rate of 0%. And you should aim for 100% accuracy. It, you can get something wrong because you're caught out by the paper. But you have no business taking chances and punting left, right, and center. That's not how it works. Particularly so for DILR and, and quant. There is no taking chances in quant. You either know the answer or you don't. If you don't know the answer, you don't attempt the question. You can't generally have a feeling that the answer could be 3.4. That doesn't work. So keep that in mind. Now moving on to DILR. Uh, to, to get 80th percentile, you're looking at 10 answers correct, maybe with 13 or 14 attempted. Getting 90th percentile, you're looking at 12 or 13 correct. 95th percentile, 15, 16 correct. 99th percentile, 18 correct. And this is under the assumption that paper is going to be slightly easier than last year, but only ever so slightly. And again, error rate should be low for the higher percentile requirement. There's nobody who can get 99.5 percentile attempting and getting 80% of the questions right. No matter what your attempts, if your error rate is 80% or your accuracy rate is only 80%, you're dead. You have to play keeping small margins in mind. You cannot afford to get one-fifth or one-fourth of your questions wrong. Then you're not even in the ballpark. Right? So, so don't operate under that premise. Moving on to quant, for 80th percentile, you're looking at about 13, 14, correct? For 90th percentile, 18, 19, correct? 95th percentile, 22, thereabout. 99th percentile, 26, 27, thereabout. And so, obviously, as I outlined before, says broad guidelines, given the numbers in the blog article clearly, um, with the, all the caveats thrown in. Uh, the one couple of things to keep in mind, what does this thinking lead to? This error rate matters right from very very early on your mock cat series get this attitudinal change the temperamental change where you say look i am not going to get stuff wrong i just don't understand when people when students say i'm hoping for and i'm aiming for a 70 percent accuracy rate which 30 percent is wrong what are you not getting right 70 percent is what your hit rate is then i'm assuming only 30 or 40 percent you knew the answer and punted for the remaining 60 percent if only one third you know but you still found a compelling reason to attempt two-thirds. You're twice as many questions you're unsure about as you're sure about. That is absurd. You cannot afford to have a, an accuracy rate that is 70% and you're out of the park. You bin that paper, don't even bother analyzing it, and then come back and get your accuracy rate higher up. And that is, that is one thing that all students get wrong consistently, which is why they phenomenally overestimate their scores. Great many people will come out and tell you that they would have scored X marks, and chances are they've scored only 60% of it, because they continuously believe that every answer they write is right. 
not taking into account all the mocks that have gone before. Actual CAT is better than many of the mocks. The questions are simpler, but they're laced with nuance. There could be some one thing that you've missed, so you'll merely walk into a trap. So, so be very particular about accuracy from mock one. Build that as a, as a habit. There is one thing to build from very early on, just to be bhyankar anal about accuracy, about errors. You cannot have errors creeping into your system left, right, and center from very early on, then you'll never be able to weed it out. So be very particular about that. And as far as these targets and numbers are concerned, read them, just kind of take them in and then bend them. Say, look, this is what this article says. I'll go into the exam with an open mind. If it's an easy paper, I'll nail it. If it is tough, I'll adjust my targets. But, but go in with that kind of open mind. Don't go in anchored to one level of difficulty that you've already conditioned yourself to. That kills performance more than anything else. Right? Best wishes for CAT.